Hi everyone, it's time for the next uh, in our series of In Focus videos. It's our director's chat, as is tradition, with another expansion just around the corner. In this case, Eve Revenant coming on Tuesday. We get together with some of the biggest wrinkly brains at CCP to talk about what's coming in this expansion. And I'm joined here today by game director CCP Rattati, creative director CCP Berger, and game design director CCP Akami. Welcome all, and thanks so much for coming to talk to us today. To kick things off, I'm going to throw straight over to CCP Rattati. Uh, can you tease tell us a little bit about uh, what is the thinking behind Eve Revenant? What are the goals for the expansion? What's the the broad strokes, big brain plan for this one? Um, yes, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the the strategy and the ideology. I just want to get deep into the features. Um, but mainly, Revenant is really about iteration on our long term projects. We have been talking about strong organizations for a long time. The future of war and true identity. And we're basically taking corp collaboration, corp identity to the next level in, in Revenant. Uh, we're delivering features that have been asked for for a decade. And uh, Future of War, we're all about adding new tech, new meta, changing changing dynamics, uh, spe specifically in NullSec, but also, I would say, completing the the kind of vertical slice of, of Equinox Soft by adding the kind of dimension of, of siphons into the into the skybooks. This is something that we wanted to showcase as the potential and the scalability of, of Equinox Soft for, on top of everything that we shipped in the kind of pre-expansion phase. We've, we've had a little pre-release already. We've had a, a, a narrative events coming up. So uh, it, it's all culminating in, in Revenant and, and it, it's really looking, really looking amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Also, um, congratulations on managed to get that webcam from 1993 working. Uh, who, who knew it's, that? I'm in London, I don't know, I, I can't, I don't know what to say. Yeah, know. Who, who knew those still made PCs with serial ports? So good job. <laughs> All right, now, um, with regards to uh, Revenant as well, uh, a key player in this is, is, of course, the Deathless, and there have been a lot of uh, events and activities surrounding what's happening with him. Obviously, you know, the, the game design direction is super important for our players, but, you know, as a we need to hang it on the framework of the narrative and the storyline that's been unveloping uh, in EVE Online for, like, the last few months now. And going back even further, that we first sort of really teased Deathless at a fan fest, I think, in, was it the one in 2022, where he had a little bit on the stage? So this has been percolating away in the background for quite some time. Um, uh, CCP Akami or CCP Burger, tell us a little bit about what's the steps that have been leading up towards this expansion in terms of what's been happening with the Deathless storyline. Yeah, I think um, the Deathless are a, a really important faction. They are movers and shakers, and they're somebody we really wanted to bring to the forefront of telling the story. Um, you saw this story kind of kick off with the uh, the structure that has appeared in Zarzak. Um, there's a lot of mystery, I think, still as to what this is and what it's going to do. But that had summoned an ancient uh, enemy, the Drifters, to come and uh, siege Zarzak. So we've seen a, a really strong and interesting build up to this narrative. Um, the Deathless are are really uh, the glue for everything that you're going to see in this expansion. Um, there's been the Thucker Caravan as well, uh, with the reveal of Adivum, which there's going to be some more sort of important reveals uh, ongoing as well. Um, and the goal here is really, for us, from a design standpoint, creating a lot of cohesion for everything that you're feeling in this expansion. It's not just about uh, telling a story or having these uh, variety of disparate features, but really tying them all into a central point. And, and the Deathless are, are the ones that are driving the force for this expansion. Um, with that said, you're going to see some more interesting beats throughout the expansion as well. So you have more things like this to look forward to. We're really taking a narrative sort of driven approach to a lot of a lot of this stuff, uh, and I'm super excited to see the reactions uh, uh, to, to that future content as well. I don't know, Berger, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, it's been very exciting to to um, work on the Deathless storyline and, and follow kind of how it, how they progress in New Eden and how they're kind of, you know, catching, you know, building their stronghold in Sarsak. Um, and this is a Definitely a, a, a new way for us to 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 introduce a new uh, faction to the game, and it's it's been very exciting to to see how they yeah how they kind of 
you know, kind of roughing things around and and making some interesting enemies and and uh, and even frenemies. So it, uh, this expansion is going to be very exciting to it's going to be exciting to follow how it progresses in this era, the, in the Revenant era that that uh, we're about to embark on. Yeah, Kaldari Mimantar Pirate Faction. Let's go. Um, we've been waiting for that for years and years and years, waiting for one to show up, and now they're finally here in the form of the Deathless. Um, the Drifters, as you mentioned, yeah, they, sh they showed up in an antagonistic way, and uh, we hadn't really heard much from them from a long time either, so it's really cool that they're sort of re-emerging. And yeah, um, the, the shrouded structure, the, the, the lock, as he refers to it, and that teaser that I played earlier. So uh, what does it open? Guess we'll find out eventually. Soon, TM. Um, all right, so... Uh, before we move on to Revenant proper, though, I did also want to take a moment just to sort of reflect on the last couple of months since Equinox, because um, uh, as, as CCP Ritardi mentioned before, we've been working iteratively a lot on a bunch of different features. And even though Equinox was, you know, back in June, July now what it was, we've had some really, really significant uh, updates and releases and additions to the game since then. And I just want to take a moment to take a look at some of them here, because a lot of these things are no, you know, not small things, and some of them are uh, long requested things. So uh, with Equinox of, obviously, to sort of shake up the meta and NullSec a little bit, we've made multiple iterations on the orbital skyhooks to continue to improve those, and we're watching how they turned out. Um, uh, added new mining anomalies because the anomalies that originally came in the expansion, people were asking for, for, for more options, so we handed those over. Um, with uh, regards to force projection, projection, we made two big changes. One came as a consequence of Equinox, and that's the intra-regional projection, because Equinox will reduce the number of anseplexes in the game overall, but also inter-regional projection uh, with, in the form of the emanation lock on Zarzak. So um, uh, amongst those things and anything else here on this, uh, on this uh, slide, does anyone want to pick up something and talk about them? Yeah, I think I think when it comes to topics like force projection, that's those are those are things that we hear from the community that are, you know, really interesting and engaging topics for us to try to solve. And as we're seeing right now, um, they're things that we don't want to necessarily like pull a big lever and and try to change all at once. Yeah, but, they're delicate as um, well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a really delicate ecosystem. It's it's something that could easily break or or cause a lot of unhappiness. So. Um, making sure that we're kind of iteratively approaching these things and like with with the Equinox soft changes being like, hey, let's let's bring down the overall number of Ansiblex gates. Let's reduce that. Um, let's look at the inter and intra regional, like you said, let's lock down Zarzak. Let's see what impact that has. Um, and with a lot of these things too, like making sure that we give them time to steep and look at that ecosystem and look at that change. Um, I know sometimes that like you'll feel that change immediately, but you won't know what that impact is for a little while. So that's kind of our approach, and and hopefully people are seeing like where we're doing these sort of regular updates, um, and we're following up on these these things over time. So it's it's not just a a one and done, um, but something that we're gonna chip away at a little bit by a little bit. Now we're hundred percent committed to making Equinox solve balanced in the future, and we have been iterating basically since day one with with uh, uh, anomaly changes, improved rewards, scaling things. So uh, we're not going to stop doing that. We're going to keep doing that. We're going to do it um, for years to come because we truly believe Ipanoxov gives us all of the tools and all of the cool toys for players to play with. We just need to, we're not going to let it just slide and, and kind of uh, just jump onto another thing. This is the, the two to three next years is, is going to be adding content into Null. And not just Null, but using that technology wider if we want to. There's nothing that says that like NPCs can't own skyhooks and, and stuff like that. So we have tools and we're going to balance them until they're both lucrative and fun. Yeah, I think just to just to plus that as well, like really we we built a super solid framework for something that we can expand on and iterate on for the next era of Eve here, really. And uh, even as you guys saw, uh, we've been able to add new upgrades and and rebalance things fairly quickly with this system. And so I'm really looking forward to like how we can continue to add on to this. And we'll talk about some of those additions that were we're putting into this next expansion in Revenant as well. Um, 
but from a, a design standpoint and and a developer standpoint our ability to kind of like work within the system is extremely powerful and something we're gonna keep kind of tending to um for for a long time to come and i guess that kind of leads us into where we are now which is the revenue expansion that is coming out on tuesday will be in your hands very very soon we can't wait for you to try it out just a heads up that at the towards the end of the stream we will be patch uh, publishing the full patch notes for the expansion so you'll have four full days to like chew on those and digest them before you go and try out what they uh, what they bring to you in space uh, so if, if there's any, if we make any references to sort of like a ship change or anything like that in this conversation, but don't give you the actual, oh, it's going to be 10% less this, 20% more that, all that stuff will be in the patch notes before the end of the stream. So you can, you can run off and start devouring those. All right. So Revenant, um, we're once again touching on, you know, the, the big key pillars, continue to iterate on those that we've worked on for multiple expansions now, um, uh, improvement iteration to home front, uh, more expansions, the Paragon hub and the features in the Skinner. Uh, and we've got new objectives in space, new ships, new weapon type of the first of its kind in EVE Online. Uh, and also, as is tradition with these streams, we also got a bunch of just little things we haven't really said anything about yet, which we kind of save for you here as a bit of a surprise. So launching into those, let's start off by talking about Homefront. A couple of weeks ago, CCP Nomad joined CCPB on a, on a stream to go through uh, a whole bunch of the new stuff that has become uh, been coming along with that. Um, uh, you know, new uh, quality of life changes, new contribution methods, and a big one, which is like a, a really a proper SRP tool for ships. Um, so the Homefront initiative, I think, is something that a lot of people can agree, even if they don't use, say, corporation projects themselves, because their or alliance already has those things handled through their own tools. I think they can appreciate how valuable this is for smaller corporations that are starting up and people who maybe don't have enough members to, you know, have their own IT department to essentially uh, set up and run things like Alliance or and and those kinds of things. So um, in regards to the the contribution that this project, uh, you know, this team, the Homefront team has been making to sort of like and, and empowering those um, smaller organizations. Uh, what are some of the impact you've seen so far or some of the anecdotes you've heard about it or anything in particular in this iteration of Homefront that you're really excited about? Yeah, maybe do if I kick things off a bit here. Um, strengthening organization and player organizations has been a very, very, very important goal for us for a while now. And uh, we've been, you know, as players have, you know, as capsuleers have noticed, like there have been, we've done a lot of iterations on, you know, that being corporation, uh, corporation projects or Skinner or all these things. It's all to kind of with the ultimate goal of, of, of strengthening player organizations. And kind of our ultimate goal is always to give more control to players. Like how can we find new and clever ways to give players more control of their game and, and you know, making their E1 line. And a lot of this work, like you said, happens outside the client today and you need you know a massive you need an IT department to set up you know these 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 applications and these pipelines and these kind of project management uh, what you may have it so our goal with with a uh, corporation project is just to kind of try to get closer and closer to parity for everyone to be able to to build these projects and and really activate their members because i mean it's okay to do level, you know, regular missions and things like that. But, you know, you have, you know, if, you, if you're just doing regular stuff, you might get 10 people in fleet. But if you have to go and clean up like, you know, citadels in, in your system or, or, you know, kill some, some evil enemies and do boring stuff, like you, you fill up five fleets. Like everyone wants to contribute to the greater good. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So maybe uh, Okami, you want to, pick up or, or study what we're actually doing. Um, I think it's, like you said, we want to empower organizations. That's what we've called strong organizations. And um, we are simply trying to, in collaboration with, with uh, often organizers uh, of both high sec uh, entities or organizations, whether corporations or alliances, and also a null, trying to find like where their pain points are. Uh, SRP is is for sure one of the big ones. Uh, we talked about it at FanFest. Um, we, and really trying to help people automate it, uh, both from a like small corporations that don't have the IT infrastructure, but like from a fairness perspective that you like weren't even aware that these things were possible. 
So trying to take as much of this infrastructure that, that players have built up and kind of trying to, I would say, uh, give it give it back to, to everyone is, is, is where we're going. And I think uh, Nomad has done a great job of finding the, the pain points, extending them in the right way, giving customization. We're rolling out, I would say, uh, almost unlimited control with with four contribution methods, allowing per system, per like with time duration, like incredible depth of of what the what we can give to players. Incredible, like probably unparalleled in 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 gaming ever. So obviously, ten thousand CEOs or a thousand CEOs or directors can can now organize better, get players out into space more than we can do. And this is all about scaling, but it's also just about getting out of the way. And the more that we get out of the way often is is, is better. Uh, but uh, also how to discover content. Uh, we've wor been working on the Air Opportunities portal uh, for a long time since, yeah, basically since the start, trying to make the things that are available to you easy to find. Like what's what's close to me? Who is issuing these things? Uh, a core project uh, are they available to me? Am I an incorporation? Um, air opportunities are there? Like are things available to me as a new player? So this is this is not onboarding or 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 veteran gameplay. It's across the whole experience. And the more we can align the UX language and and kind of discovery mechanisms across the game, the better as well. We don't want one system in null sec and another system in, in high sec. So this this to me is a it 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 truly is a amazing foundation and extensions of 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 a thing that probably most gaming communities or or media or anyone wouldn't understand, but it's extremely powerful to us. I think uh, the discovery discoverability thing that you mentioned is super important. If you are in a small corporation with maybe only 20, 30 members. You might be from all sorts of different awkward time zones where people are logging in when there's only two or three people online at a given time and they want to do something um but being able to look at the jobs board on um on the corporation projects if their ceo sets them up and go like oh here's something i can do that will actually you know create value for the corporation he, he needs he needs uh, a whole bunch of tritanium so i'll just go out and shoot some feldspar bring it drop it off get rewarded for it and you can monitor the progress on that as well the other thing too I, i've heard brought up often when we you know do like player research and stuff is particularly newer players um when they join like a play group for the first time they're often told to like hey go to this website leave the game go to this website log in let it, you know, or, let it authorize it to access your account, you know, all, all these kinds of things, which to a, a new player, especially somebody who is like familiar with the reputation that EVE Online has uh, in amongst gaming communities might give it a bit of a side eye and be like, uh, I don't know about that, it doesn't sound right. But so having all of this stuff contained within the client um, means it's more accessible and just feels a little bit cozier for a new person who might be um, starting out in EVE Online, just makes the whole experience more holistic, which is really, really cool. Um, we mentioned SRP before, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's been added. You can now do a lot more, make your projects a lot more granular, um, and uh, you can limit contribution methods to certain uh, quantity per certain member. So one person can't just come in and like, you know, monster the whole thing. You know, they can only maybe contribute up to 20% of whatever it is that you need, and so everybody else has to make a contribution, and uh, it has, really has to be a group effort uh, effort to, to pull that off. Um, but moving from um, Homefront onto player identity now, I wanted to talk about the latest iteration to Paragon Hub because two long requested um, uh, sort of improvements have been made to it. And the, well, uh, technically it's one, I was going to say Corp and Alliance is two separate things. But now if someone creates um, a skin in the Paragon Hub, they can list it, ex or now they will be able to list it exclusively to members of their own corporation or alliance. And furthermore, after they mint them, they can make them available to those alliance members for ever marks if they so wish instead of actually having to charge them isc or even plex for the skins so that kind of dream of like having the the quartermaster you know we call it a brand manager in game but the guy who's in charge of the corp um designing um you know basically making uniforms for your corporation can 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 as a career can actually be a thing now if you so want it yeah this is a this is a huge thing this is uh this is what we always this was always our goal with skinner was to give people the the uh, ability to build costumes, uniforms 
for their squad. I mean, there's nothing scarier than seeing a a, a group of hooligans coming running towards you. A in, swarm of angry bees. Yeah, in, in all the same uniform. So this was always the dream, and, and we're finally getting it. Uh, on top of that, we're also adding in in some more customization features to to really uh, allow corporations to to express who they are. Um, we're allowing players to to take the patterns that they have and actually put them on top of each other and and kind of allow them to nest or cut out or add or or kind of you know whatever you want to. Uh, we're also adding a whole heap of new patterns uh, to the game, uh, and a lot of them are going to be you can you will be able to you know find them while doing all the content. Uh, it's not just it's not just going to the store and buying stuff, but actually going into the world and finding it and 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 uh, you know using it yourself or getting it to your your brand manager, your corpse brand manager. So that's a that's a huge activation activation moment. Um, and yeah, I think this is a this is what we always wanted to do. We wanted to wanted to empower corporations to really color the space that they're in, and this has been a kind of ongoing conversation with the community now for, for years upon years upon years. Yeah. I mean, I'm think, I'm, obviously I'm thinking of the um, that really ancient Hello Kitty scorpion from like 15 years ago that somebody made a mock-up of, of like, you know, this is how you could design your ships and Eve. And obviously the great work that Tambor from, you know, AKA Akaldari Prime Pony Club has been doing over the years, just sort of skinning on his own and sent posting them online and people going, CCP, when we can do this, you can do it now. And, you know, this all goes back again to, I think, was it, Viridian, where we introduced structure skins, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, so first you could just you, first you could just paint your structure skins, and you could do like three things, you know, three layers to it. And then we brought out Skinner, and then we now we're adding more um, more pattern slots, more materials, and like you said, you can find them through in-game activity. You might even find it like a rare, you know, shade of green that no one else can have, just to sort of like make your skins a little bit more excuse, exclusive. Yeah. Um, it's it's another it's another really good example of just like the progressive development on this one feature and just sort of polishing and polishing and polishing it and expanding it and getting it closer and closer to sort of like what the dream has been all along. And I think that's that's really for me been very consistent with like development in the last year, a year year and a half or so. And you know the the starting out as a foundation with the structure skins as an example of like how far we've come and how we've continued to work on this. Yeah, I mean, this has been kind of our goal since since Uprising and, and since we kind of went back to expansions is to be more iterative in how we work, is to kind of start small and build on it. And I, I feel now that we're, we're kind of with Revenant, we're really closing the loop on, you know, uh, ship skins and corporation projects like they, you know, now with all of a sudden it makes sense together and, and it, you know, you can start to connect the dots why we're working on these two things. In parallel, and and I think this is a great example of like you know when the when the what is it like the sum of all parts is greater than something something the gesto yeah uh, yeah this is one of those moments where you can see like when these when these come together uh, uh, there's this will I think really drive uh, uh, organizations through the roof and and you know strengthen them. Uh, this is a classic example of of. The thing that we wanted is just simply too big to make in one go. It we, it couldn't be done, and it was very complex, and it it need it needed a lot of faith to 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 actually for the company to start working on it. But when we had identified like a through line, we could do it first this and this and this. The biggest risk in the whole thing was really, will we? How long will it take players to get where we're going? Because they only see a piece of it on the way. There's like we're we're asking for a lot of faith. We're asking for a lot of trust and patience to get to that place. Uh, but we can't either promise something in time. We could we didn't know how long it would take to get here. It took four expansions to go from having no customization at all beyond skins to fully customizable multi-pattern skins that brand managers can now make for everyone in the corporation. But four expansions ago, we couldn't know that. It just, we needed to solve a lot of stuff on the way. And this is now, this is the complete function. This was what we wanted. 
now we can just build on it and the core of it was it's not like you said it like absolutely not restricted to a store it's it, it's universe content it's tradable universe content and it's it's through the market it's through discovery it's through exploration um, it's through direct listings now, and 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 one thing you, uh, you forgot in in the in the total listing is that you can also list to yourself. You can list to your own characters, which we just didn't have last expansion. Obviously, we want it, but now we have it, and this is the this is the thing. Now we can just add and add and add and add to it, and it's just a start. We we can evolve loads of, I would say, trade opportunities going forward. We have a, a really good foundation for all kinds of hitherto untradeables. Let's just call them that. I also want to give some love to something kind of small but profound, which is our new randomization feature. So for somebody who's not like super visually creative like me, it is so awesome to go in there and just hit the randomize button because like it really just shows you what is creatively possible and it kind of creates like a, a good starting space. If you don't know like where you want to go with something or, or how to be visually creative, like uh, go go in there and check this out because like it, it just kind of adds a whole new experience to this and I, I love it. So such a small thing, but it's it's going to have like such a huge impact for people. And you get a filter by showing only things you own. So it's kind of like, show me just the stuff that I could make, but then also show me anything I could make. And that yeah. makes it even wilder. It's like one of those. It's like being in my brain when you press a button. <laughs> yes, just like a, a random mess of colors and noise. Yeah. Um, and, sorry, CCP Retardius reminded me, it was like one of those cocktail apps where you just like, put in every bottle of liquor that you have in your house and you press a button and it tells you which cocktails you can make with what you've got there. It's like, oh, you can make a sidecar. All right, let's have that. I think it's only got two ingredients. I'll anyway. All in there, just go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it can lead to bad places, but, you know, experimentation is, I'm, I'm always keen for that. Um, but if you've been napping on, on Skinner for a while now, do check it out. The tool itself is incredibly impressive. It blew my mind. I was, it was far more sophisticated, far, far more sophisticated than I imagined we would get with such a tool. I thought it literally would be like layer one, layer two, layer three, and, you know, and then you, then you get your skin. But the, the thing you can do with projections and decals and stuff like that is wild. Just open it up and try it. It's already in your client. Um, but um, moving on now to some of the other content that came out um, or that is coming out in uh, Revenant. Uh, talk about like uh, objectives in space. Uh, things to get people uh, active out in space and uh, uh, either f looking after themselves or maybe sort of uh, in enticing them come out of stations and maybe putting themselves at risk of other people who might pounce on them. Um, it seems to be Akami or Rattari or Berger, do you want to talk a little bit about like the mercenary dents, which are coming up, what they do and, you know, what was the design goals behind that? Yeah, I'd be happy to, to jump on that one. So, uh, one of the biggest new sort of features that you'll you'll see in Revenant is something called a mercenary dent. Uh, and what it is, is it's a deployable object that you can put onto a temperate skyhook uh, in NullSec right now. And this is definitely tied into the Deathless and who they are. If, you, if you're thinking about mercenary dens, you're probably thinking like the wretched hive of scum and villainy, and that's a little bit what it is. Um, so you'll deploy these things onto, onto skyhooks. They are meant to be sort of when we're thinking about the granularity of, of objectives and content, there's something that solo people can do or small groups can participate in. Um, and what you'll want to do is, is kind of tend to these things. So you can use them to create uh, and generate um, encrypted infomorphs. So basically the, there, there's, the story kind of is they're stealing clones and turning them into infomorphs that you'll take back to the, the Deathless to do things with. We'll talk about those things later. Um, and it's going to come with a couple of additional systems on top of this. So there is an anarchy and development system, basically, which means that if you're attending to this thing, you'll be making more encrypted infomorphs. So you'll get your rewards faster. Um, but if you leave this thing kind of in space and don't tend to it, then it will create anarchy, which will then begin to suppress workforce. So if you can kind of tell already, there is a little bit of um, tactical play there in, in that if you want to deploy these around your own corporation's skyhooks, you might want to be tending to them fairly regularly. But you may also want to deploy these against some of your enemies or other people, because if you do that, 
um, strategically, it's going to start to suppress workforce, which will have a, a massive rippling effect potentially on uh, on the sort of SAV ecosystem. So this is just a small piece and kind of an example of how we can expand onto the SAV system and uh, create a different sort of level of granularity for gameplay um, and, and really expand on those sort of like tactical opportunities for for people on different levels everything from like skyhook raiding uh citadels and and sort of like mercenary dens and and stuff like that so we're, we're always looking to sort of like philosophically from a design perspective fill fill those gaps look look for opportunities to find different levels of of play for people and and the mercenary den is is one of the new ones in this in the revenant expansion and on that we did a bit of a deep dive uh with um CCP Trash Panda and CCP B, uh, which we played during the Alliance Tournament final weekend, which sort of went into the Mercenary Dens, how do they work and what they do. You can find the VOD of that on this EVE Online YouTube channel now if you want to get caught up what was there. But then, of course, the patch notes will have some more information about those when they're published. But on that subject, you were talking about, um, you know, different scales of this sort of content, Citadels, ESSs, Mercenary Dens. Um, we were discussing this the other day at CCP Retardi, uh mentioned this concept of, of you know, tactical uh, objectives in space for uh, all sizes of fleets or fleets of all sizes or something like that. Um, I've got just like a bit of a graphic here I'll put up, but CCP Retire, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Tofas and Tofas. Yep. Tofas and Tofas. Yeah, this, is, this goes all the way back to like, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's uh, more than two. It's, it's pre-expansion era. Um, we have always been trying to figure out a way to, to reward risk and attention. And we've also been mindful of trying to create, uh, let's say, interesting things to do to like to undock. Um, and and, and we, we started building up a framework of, okay, what if I'm solo? What if I'm multiboxing uh, like my little fleet? What if I'm multiboxing a big fleet? What if I'm actually not multiboxing? I'm, I'm in a small gang with some friends. And my null sec, Potsman, high sec, and started to, to create like a matrix of activities that, that are discoverable, fun, achievable, lucrative. And then from the other side, who's going to build these? Who's going to make them? Why are they there? Et cetera. And try to populate the game uh, or capitalist space, preferably not through dev related. I, I, we don't want to spawn these things necessarily ourselves. We want them to be the result of player activity. And that the first one of these was really the, the ESS. The ESS siphons off player activity into a bank that can then be stolen from. And that actually created a lot of sustainable evergreen content. ESSs are very popular. People run, like attack ESSs uh, hundreds of times a day across the universe. Uh, and there's engagement as well as trying to find ESS keys and selling them. So that's a little ecosystem just around that. And we want to use that idea to build more of these things. Skybooks is absolutely a version of that. Players build them. They, they, they convert planet resources into, into usable things uh, for other people to steal or for you to, to, to exploit yourself. I'll just, and then, I'll just add that on the yes. slide now. But just the slide people looking at now, these are just some examples, for example, of the different scales of of these sort of tactical objectives that existed prior to Equinox. You know, the ESSs that Cisper Tidy pointed out, of course, you can go around bashing citadels, you've got full-blown sovereignty warfare. Uh, and opportunistic hunting here is basically we're just referring to roaming, although roaming is technically doesn't have an objective other than just to find people and kill. But but the people, if there are people out in space tending to these things, you know, like engaging with ESSs, that gives your gang something to go and chase after, even if you yourself aren't chasing the ESS. And um, in Equinox and coming up in Revenant, we're adding a couple more. Uh, you just started talking about Skyhooks then, C. Spiritati. Sorry to interrupt you. Please continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you, roaming can be roaming, but roaming can also be, uh, I would say, high value hunting or whale, whale hunting. So that, that definitely is, is something, uh, a specialized uh, roaming activity in, in some way. Uh, yeah, but we, it, it wasn't really many things that kind of got generated and uh, through player action, except literally citadels, which are not things that you can attack as a small gang. It, it just isn't. Uh, nothing with timers, really. 
So we, we went into this mind space of, okay, deployable, something that doesn't have timers. We need to fill in this, this, this uh, area of, of, of things to do. So that's where Methanoxus come from. That's where the, uh, the original moon miner came from. Um, and now we even have this layer on top of the sky hook. There's a, like a secondary, smaller thing to attack. So this is, this is all in, in line with the philosophy of, of, of making players generate content or uh, opportunities for others. Then the discoverability is also something that we talked about a lot, especially around sky, skyhooks. When do I know they're coming out of reinforcement? When do I know these things? When can I find, where can I find them? And when, when are they available to me? Uh, so that's, are they evergreen? Or are they always available? And we're just filling in this blank. And now we have so much, so much uh, opportunity or many opportunities to, to add more of these. There's nothing stopping us from from adding loads of 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 these kinds of tactical objectives into space. The, Maybe something that Greg or Okami can talk about that's cool. for future future. Visit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just just to share a little bit too. Like it's it's another new sort of design paradigm of how something can impact um, another system. So part of why Equinox is so interesting and 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 from a design perspective is we have all these levers we can we can work with. We can have structures that siphon things off of other things. So we're taking workforce and turning them into something else. We can have structures that could boost things um, that you want to protect. Um, so so this is uh, the start of a new paradigm. Um, and this is just the first sort of like version of of what we're seeing as to how we can work work with it from a design perspective, which is super cool. I'm I'm really excited about it. The scale of the of the mercenary den is too. It's literally just a thing a single player can go anchor on a structure and then tend to it. You know, if they yeah. want to, if 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 they if their alliance leaders are like, okay, yeah, go choose a skyhook, but you better you better take care of this tactical operations because <laughs> if we start losing, you know, workforce output goes down. You know, it's your ass sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm it's like, like, a like, like, like <laughs> I can even see like even smaller. Uh, I, I just think this to 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 come this morning as uh, pick like structures. You 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 just sneak up to something and you you just like put a tiny deployable and you start and then someone needs to go kind of check out and like de de louse the system because there's there's been multiple small pirates kind of just like leeching off and. And just no one noticing it. So there's like loads of things we can do here. And I even forgot uh, when we when we did the first faction warfare revamp, a lot of the new activities were about actually deploying things into space that other people would then interact with, propaganda outposts and, and those kinds of things. We didn't want them just to be kill NPC and then happens. We wanted to be a a thing that you do that creates a target for others. Yeah, and also like these the the mercenary tanks are uh, they're actually quite small when they're you know they're they're actually you know fairly small ships can put them into their cargo so you don't need a massive hull or anything like this so it's it's quite accessible for for many um, and it's it's quite exciting because you you can both use this as a like an as an offensive thing you can drop it on your enemy or you can you know use it you know to build up your own kind of your own space garden. Um, so it's a, there are multiple dimensions to this new tool and, and it's going to be interesting to see where the matter will land on it. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit now about some of the new ships that are coming. Uh, I heard someone say once even online is a game about internet spaceships. So let's talk about the internet spaceships. Uh, I said at the top of the, the stream that, you know, like uh, Kaldari Mimitar Pirate Faction, finally. Uh, also, Covert Ops Battlecruiser, dope. Brand new weapon system as well, which caused a little bit of consternation when we first sort of like went into some of the details on it. But I think things have calmed down a little bit and people have sort of gotten over the initial knee jerk and, and have uh, decided to see how it kind of plays out. But um, yeah, so the Deathless ships uh, are coming, the Tholos and the Cenotaph. Uh, somebody, I'm going to press a button to start playing a video. Someone's picked this up mm. for me. Sure. I mean, I, I, I can start. Um, yeah, really like the design philosophy here, first of all, was pretty simple. It was, it was, we, we had a hole to fill here, which was, which was the Matar Keldar pirate faction ships. Um, so that was, that was one direction. 
Uh, and then we wanted to think about like thematically, we actually, part of our design process, we actually wrote some stories about what an experience might be like in some of these ships. And that kind of helped inform what, what the whole design and, and how that unfolded. Uh, and so really these kind of like, we, we looked at the, the Deathless as a faction, who they were, what they kind of represented and what they, they felt like to us as designers. And really they kind of ended up feeling like, like rogues, right? Like rogues and scoundrels, mercenaries. And so the the theming behind these is really these these powerful sort of cloaked ships that you want to get in and be very skillful with. Um, so you know when you're kind of stalking and, and getting ready to jump on top of your opponent. Um, and then uh, you, you, you appear and un unleash hell on them. Uh, now, there is a high skill cap. We, we genuinely believe there's a high skill cap on these. So they will be powerful, but they're going to be hard to hard to use they have split weapons and they are they're quite slow um and i don't think they're going to be something that's used in in like massive you know quantities and fleets and stuff but you're going to want a few of these and you're going to want to know when to use them and if you are skillful with them they will be quite quite powerful and something to be feared and that is something we want to kind of go out the door with and of course we'll pay attention to the tuning and the balance of these things over time um but I'm looking forward to getting into some of these and, and seeing what they can do. Um, and, and with that, maybe jumping into a little bit about the, the weapons and, and, and what they are and how they work as well. So as we mentioned uh, earlier with the mercenary dens, uh, basically the, the culmination of your activities with mercenary dens is going to lead to some of these rewards and weapons, the new ships and weapons with the Deathless. So um, we're tying all of these things together thematically. And so our new Scarab Breacher pods are basically uh, these pods that the Deathless are creating uh, war clone soldiers for you to fire at into other ships. And so if you can imagine, like, you're firing these little pods of soldiers that are burrowing through shields and they're they're burrowing into the hull of a ship and, and then they're they're going in there and kicking open doors as, like, the sort of, like, anti-soldier anti, uh, weaponry is... Yeah. is setting demolition and charges yeah. and... Yeah, exactly. Some little explosions going yeah, yeah. off and things like that. So, um, very excited. New, new, new uh, damage type as well. So damage over time. I know that's like a staple in many games, but this is the first time Eve seeing it. So we're gonna see new creative ways of destroying people, new strategies at play, and uh, really just uh, I'm I'm super curious to see what what people do with this. Um, and that that opens up new design, you know, territories for us in the future as well. I'm sorry, no. and like C. Spiro Tardi just like teleported behind us and uh, switched camera. I'm he, sure he'll be around. We'll come back and we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, well, uh, it's okay. I'm, am I am I off uh, camera now? Yeah, too? yeah. It's a uh, it's back. It's back. Hey. Whoa! When we I was, did it. Uh, went on a mission. Yeah, on the on the on the damage over time weapon, I I was reflecting on the initial reaction to it the other day, and I, I mentioned this to 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 the three of you while we're chatting about it, but I, I, it begs repeating here. I, what I said, what I said to them was like, imagine, all right, this is a thought experiment for for Twitch chat as well. Imagine stealth bombers did not exist in Eve Online; they never had. You know, you hadn't even heard of the concept for it. And then in this expansion, we say, hey, there's going to be these new ships coming, stealth bombers, and we gave you all the kind of details. People would be like, wait, you're telling me there's a frigate-sized ship that can cloak, that has a unique we weapon type that does uh, AOE damage in a 30 kilometer radius for 6,000 damage. It's like CCP, you've lost your marbles. This is going to destroy the game. This is going to ruin every type of gameplay out there. You'll be able to take out entire battleship fleets with just a, 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 a small gang of these. And it's like, yeah, you will. But in order to achieve that, you have to like, you have to like plan meticulously. You have to coordinate with your fleet mates. You have to execute the attack run perfectly in order to pull those things off. And on paper, stealth bombers sound, you know, kind of kind of broken. Um, but in application in Eve Online, they've been an incredibly cool tactical addition to any scale of combat. Um, and when large fleets go against each other, like in so, uh, block scale warfare, they usually, you know, often they bring along a wing of of bombers just to try and like either throw some void bombs. Uh, at their loggy or try and get a lucky bombing run off like a like a caracal support fleet or something like that something nice and squishy and i think this is how we're going to see the same thing with the deathless ships like you'll be able to use them in small scale applications certainly but um imagine just like a handful of these 
of Tholos is getting booshed on top of the enemy Lodgy and then you know, spraying the breaching pods on everyone and then trying to get the hell out. Or doing that in the middle of the main fleet and Lodgy having to deal with all these broadcasts because people everywhere are taking damage. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy, but I think in a really cool, chaotic kind of way. So um, just as like stealth bombers were a, a fantastically additive thing to sort of like the dynamics of, of um, PvP and EVE Online, I think these are going to be totally awesome as well. And as you said, we'll be monitoring how they're being used. And if they are oppressive, uh, you've already mentioned to me, you don't have to say anything here on stream, of course, but um, you've already mentioned to me like a couple of like, you know, concepts for counterplay that could be uh, incorporated into the game as well, which also sounded super interesting. So in some ways I'm kind yeah. of actually hoping they're a little bit broke. Because I mean, let's, let's, jam. Ideas let's, sound let's, jam, let's jam live. Why not? Just roll uh, out a whiteboard and start. Yeah, you'll just, uh, draw some stuff up. But no, really, like, I, I think, you know, as we add new things to the game, like a new, like a new damage type that invites new strategies. So we want to see how that plays out and, like, where that kind of feels its niche in the meta. And then we can start to look at, like, there's going to be new ship and the ships and there's going to be new modules in the future. Like how do we come up with effective counterplay to those things, right? Like instead of just maybe nerfing things or taking things away, we start to look at like, well, can we, there's damage over time. Can we have heal over time? Can we have, you know, all these different concepts that exist? Um, like the, there's a ton of possibilities and, and, and we are going to see a new meta now. And that's an exciting thing. I think that's, that's really interesting. And, um, that that offers us a ton more interesting space in design and how we approach uh, coming up with new ships in the future too. And the Sanitaph might actually dethrone the Widow as my favorite ship in the game. Uh, That's it, so, it's it so looks good. cool as shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And we've yeah. I've flown them in playtests and uh, fought against some of the guys on the community team. And yeah, they're a lot of fun to fly. Really hard to sort of juggle split uh split damage types but you basically got three damage types right each one's you got yep. missiles you got guns and you've got the breacher pod and you have to That's sort right. of like coordinate the timing for everything perfectly i'm terrible at it but some people are going to make these absolutely sing yeah and i have to say like art really i mean geez these these ships look amazing and it's been so much fun following like kind of uh, you know the the deathless station um the fulcrum station and and uh the hangar inside there. And you can really see these kind of design elements come through this kind of Kaltari Minmatar, you know, the utilitarian and the duct tape kind of come together and create something truly magnificent. Yeah, Mad Max Frankenstein out of the chopping up two ships and welding them together. They're, they're sick. I, I expect one day we'll see an extension to the ship line. I can't say see what, uh, what other sort of like weird mashups come out of uh, for the Deathless. Um, and as I mentioned at the top of the stream now, moving on, also mentioned that we will be talking about some things that we haven't spoken about, like previously in any of the communications about the content for Revenant. And I, I guess I'll give it CCP Okami because like it was last last stream where you told us about the, you know, conduit jump for carriers and some other cool things like that. So uh, again, the specifics about what uh, we're about to talk about will all be in the patch notes so we're not going to get into the reads but we will let you know some of the really really cool things that are, are going to be coming along with revenant with all this other stuff that we've already talked about yeah yeah there's there's a uh, a whole bunch of of small things that are just i think going to bring a lot of joy to people and I'm, I'm super excited to dig into some of this stuff so the first one is Again, as we were talking about these new Deathless ships and, and rebalancing them, we are coming up with a whole bunch of ship rebalancing uh, for this this expansion. Uh, the first one to mention is probably Marauders. Marauders are getting a little tweaking and tuning. They're a bit oppressive right now. Um, philosophically, we don't want to like super nerf them because we want them to be aspirational and powerful, but they are getting a couple of changes, so that's something to watch out for. Um, there's a lo much longer list of other ships that are just getting small tweaks and improvements, things that haven't been feeling like they're sitting well right now in the meta. And so, so a lot of this is coming just purely through community feedback as well. So, so monitoring that and really looking at that in design. Um, the next big one to talk, talk about is, uh, uh, some iterations in Poshven. I think that's, that's going to be super exciting. Uh, so again, this, this is direct from, from communities, stuff that people have been asking for, uh, for a long time. I'm not going to get super, super in depth here, but we're going to see, um, basically just new ways, like we're splitting rewards up. So it's not just, you're, you're not just getting ISK, but you're getting a lot 
or sort of like ultra red loot and stuff like that. So there's a little bit more risk. Um, just some rebalance to some of how the the sites and, and various things work. Um, there's a big laundry list of the stuff. So please watch out for patch notes. Just know that like even though you're hearing a lot of stuff about like Equinox and Nullsec and Solve Space and stuff like that, we are looking at other spaces in the game and we are tending to these things as well that mean mean a lot to people. I just want to point um, out here that this makes Drake it on now the most effective CSM in the history of Eve Online because he was only elected last week, hasn't even signed his NDA yet and already uh, Pochvin changes. So good work, Drake. Let's go. Uh, I hope you don't get bored once you actually join the C. Once you officially start on CSM nine, now that everything has been taken care of. No, no, not everything has <laughs> been taken care of. There's always another thing. There's always another thing. But sorry, please yeah. continue. No, that's great. Yeah. Um, I, again, like that is coming from the community there, and and super appreciated from us uh, at CCP and on the design team. Um, another big one I think that's going to be interesting and maybe a surprise to some people is some refinement of, of abyssal things. So mutaplasmids are getting uh, a big overhaul as to how they work and how the uh, system and economics of them work. So now you're not, you know, if you end up with a bunch of uh, useless modules that you've, you've tried to tried to mutate and change, um, you can you can grind them up into dust and turn them into new and even more powerful mutaplasmids than before. So there's a there's a use and a purpose for those things, and a whole ecosystem behind uh, behind mutaplasmids now. So um, I know uh, Berger likes that one as your your big mutaplasmid. This, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. This is a a small tiny in the scope of things, mm -hmm. smart iteration of a system that had loads of potential. But we only just made the basic, just the basic core loop. Now with this addition, it just like it multiplies across like all the spectrum. It just completes the loop. And I love when things start to like, yeah, you get the first version, but you get the second version that has the like the well thought out details. And I, it can even go further. There's like plenty of space to 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 use plasmids elsewhere and, and across the universe. But just this core loop is now complete in that sense. Yeah. I, I love Super the idea that system. you'll be able to take a, a bricked module, which get, you know, when you brick a module, it's usually kind of like, oh, it's a sad moment. But at least now you've got like the silver lining of like, all right, I'll turn it into into abyssal fairy dust and use it again. Another mutation. I'm going to tell a story out of school here, and I hope CCP Swift will forgive me. But when we were talking about this, he told like this, like, listen up, this is what CCP Swift does, right? He keeps all of his bricked modules. And then at like the end of the year, whenever the Alliance does like the you know, secret Santa or whatever, he'll throw them all in a can and he'll give them to that other person as a secret Santa gift and tell them to go and find the one good module amongst all the brick modules. So they have to sit there and look at each one individually and look at the bars and go, is that better or worse? But thing is, there's no good module in there. They're all trash. So um, <laughs> sorry for adding you on that one, CCP Swift. I hope you can continue to do it now that people are on to you. I thought it was freaking brilliant. And uh uh, cl classic but classic now it's story. all valuable now yeah, now yeah. it's all good yeah he won't be able to do it again anyway you'll just be able to grind them up and and go for another role and maybe even get a more successful model module than he would have gotten otherwise i guess this is player made content yeah <laughs> um yeah uh tcp is killing the um shithouse secret santa meta uh good work uh anyway so, we're done yeah, yeah that's it. um sorry please continue um, yeah, I think uh, we're going to see a couple other things. We've got um, more relic sites for uh, for for drones uh, or, uh, go going on out there. Actually, I, I want to pass this over to, to Berger now because there's a couple of visual things here. I think that that you, like you should really yeah harp on. Uh, so we've actually been going through uh, a lot of our anomalies and and uh, really updating them and just giving them a. a yeah, a visual past. Like we've been pushing our, our kind of visual capabilities a lot over the years. And, you know, very slowly we've been going through our old content and just giving it kind of a a fresh coat of paint and, you know, updating some of the NPC behaviors and, and you know, adding some of the some of the stuff that we've built for the MP, for instance. So now we have, you know, you can actually have, you know, track how you're progressing through the dungeon. Mm. What wave you're on and things like that. Yeah, those little info panels that showed up in the Siege of Zarjak event will yeah. now show up in these sites. And these these shots you're seeing on the screen right now, these are havens and sanctums. Like yeah. the, you know, like and they look 
unbelievable now. I love the God Rays and the Sancho one, but please, sorry, carry on. Yeah, I mean, they look amazing. And it's, it is it is a huge part of the experience is to when you go in there and, and you know, that it feels real. It feels like, you know, menacing and dangerous. Um, in some cases, like, yeah, we have we have changed a bit how, how the NPCs behave, but our goal is not necessarily to 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 flip these, you know, on it on their hat. Um, and this is a lot of tensions and there are a lot of edge cases. So so don't hesitate if you find issues, you know, drop us a bug report. But I think this is a this is a beautiful step forward. It's an important step forward and we'll continue on this on this path updating all of our content and, and making it kind of fit for for uh, the third decade you'll be able to if you're just running sites you won't just warp in on the same shitty looking twisted asteroid uh for the for the 15th consecutive year now visually they're gonna look yeah. a lot better and you'll be able to monitor your progress as you work your way through the site as well Absolutely. it's really cool and i mean this is you know we're constantly we're constantly pushing uh eve forward and we're constantly evolving it and it's a very important it's a very important element in developing eve and we're constantly balancing this like you know new versus old like you know when should we add new things to the game when should we re renovate stuff and when should we kind of take a step back and and you know fix some of the 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 good old content which is oftentimes very you know wonderful content um and and one of one other big thing that we're looking at this time around is uh, we're kind of continuing our our um, improvement on on ships and making ships the heroes of the game. Like it's a spaceship game about spaceships. Let's let's always make sure that that we're improving that experience. So one of the super cool things that we're looking at this time around is that we're updating the uh, ship show info window um, and we're making it look a bit less like like uh, a spreadsheet thing and and more like a car brochure but right. don't work but burger uh, i like spreadsheets yeah but you act we are actually adding more you're in luck yeah you're in luck we're adding more spreadsheet to the show info window uh so we're adding the capability of minimizing the uh the uh window as you can see on the screen now and uh yeah you will actually get to see way more information and you know by having multiple of them open at the same time you can now, you know, get all the juicy, you know, details on whoever you're fighting uh, or the ship that you're fighting. So you can make better decisions on, on who to shoot in the face. But ultimately, like what, you know, this kind of goes really well with our, our kind of thought process of, you know, Eve should be, you know, easy to grasp, but hard to master. And we want to create these moments where you're like, go in for a ship. Oh, cool. It's great. You know, I have all this information here. At hand, you know, we've moved all the skins, you know, available for that ship into this window. You know, we've we have kind of fitting requirements in this window, and you can go between it, and you have the ship kind of moving around, and it's viscerally, ex, you know, exciting. But then, if you need more information, you can minimize it or make it smaller, and and you can really allow yourself to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, a second thing thing we're looking at uh, on this topic is that. Uh, we're actually adding in a, a really beautiful moment for the when you board a new ship for the first time, um, and this should be a huge thing. Like you've been really working on, you know, getting into the into the APOC, and uh, you know it should be exciting when you when you first get into it. You know, a few years ago it was actually just you know you put some skills into the queue, and and it just kind of happened that you you uh, realized that you can now fly oh. a bit. One day you can fly at an apocalypse or, oh, my apocalypse is my hangar. I assemble it. I bought it. My first battleship ever. And it, it's just yeah. like, now you're in a battleship. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, i got the video here. I'll, I'll throw it up so people can see what we're talking about. This is epic. Yeah. And as you could see towards the end there, there was like, you know, the apocalypse and, and you know, a little bit of a, a kind of a narrative blurb. A flavor being... quote about it. And uh, it also puts up the name of the ship manufacturer. It mentions, calls yeah. out Visium for the apocalypse. Yeah. Um, and I mean, not a lot of people, you know, know 
necessarily know like the the tech two ship manufacturers and uh, who they are what they do uh, yeah. although apocalypse is only a tech one in law they still also make the apocalypse i believe yeah. um yeah. in addition to things like the, the like the zealot for example yeah. and the redeemer and we've actually added this flavor text to all empire ships uh some of the faction ships but there's like a couple of factions that are left uh, and we'll be just kind of dropping them in in the in the coming weeks it's a it's a lot of ships and and uh yeah our narrative peeps have been hard at work kind of adding flavor to the ships and it's it's awesome because it just gives it kind of... that that this expansion is a load of ship <laughs> it's a load <laughs> but yeah, yeah i mean that that little moment really puts the ship at like the center of the game right and and yeah. the, it reminded me of i was thinking about this the other day i'm i'm not gonna be like oh i'm gonna date myself everyone already knows i'm an old nerd uh, i was thinking about it reminded me of when i used to play burnout 3 takedown any of you guys play nice. that? And yes. any time on the OG Xbox and any time you unlocked a new car, there would be like this little sizzle reel of the car, mm -hmm. like the camera panning around it from different angles while rock music played. And it was just like such a cool moment to celebrate. Yeah, hey man, you got this sick new car, go nuts in it. And this is just a little bit more, there's more, but there's more reverence, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to this experience because it's like, oh, here it comes out of the darkness, the lights snap on. Those little little bit of trinkets. So this will this will occur the first time you you bought a, a new ship for the uh, for the first time you bought a new ship. Um, um, you, I, if you're like me, you're, as soon as it's in the game, you'll probably just go through your hangar with like 140 ships in it and board them all one at a time to see them. But um, if you're seeing it for the 500th time and you just want to undock, there will be just like a you'll be able to just like skip that process and just go straight back to the hangar. And what if I want to see it again because it's so cool? Yeah, can you repackage it and unpackage it again? Is that how it works, CCB Burger? Tell me now. It doesn't say the first time that you you board a new ship. Like we're not gonna, it's not gonna be like jumping between ships and you're just gonna see this. Brah, brah. <laughs> but we will have an ability to like replay this video. I mean it. Oh, okay, cool. I, mean, I have I have some Karas queens in my in my uh, hangar, uh, so that I will never undock. But I you know I I love kind of jumping into them in mm -hmm. my cool hangar in my secret location and just enjoy them but uh, and this will i will definitely be pressing this button again and again awesome all right i think that pretty much wraps up everything that we wanted to cover uh i've said it a couple times already but i will reiterate uh the patch notes uh, uh are live so go check them out and um, you can get all the, the fine details about the things we just talked about i know some people are going to be scrambling going like they said something about marauders where is it um uh uh, just go dive on that, but check out the rest of the stuff as well. Uh, before we put a pin in this, though, is there anything else anyone would like to sort of mention uh, as we sign out? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we covered a lot. I mean, we covered a lot of stuff uh, in the stream. Uh, I don't think we managed to cover everything. There, uh, this expansion is a, it's a beefy one. It's, uh, I think it's one that people will remember, and it's, uh, yeah. It's gonna be fun to to uh, blow you all up in space. <laughs> we'll see you out there. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Go read the patch notes and enjoy Revenant on uh, Tuesday. Until then, bye. Bye bye. See you.